25 minutes before 10 o'clock. One of the things that we've learned from our visits with Laura Byrne from Career Source is that we have some really good jobs in our community that not all only offer a great opportunity for employment, but great opportunities for careers, which is uh, so much more important than a job. Isn't it a career versus a job? You know, plus you get the benefits, the, the health insurance and all that other stuff. It is just a wonderful thing to know that we have such great opportunities here in Ocala. Um, so we have some more folks from the Career Source. Uh, Rusty Skinner is here. He's the CEO of Career Source. So sit just leave you married, so you must be Laura's boss. Is that right? Is that right? I'm looking at the wrong person. You're, you're, yes. you're her boss? Yes, yes. All right. Uh, and Rob Adamak is in the studio. You've been here before. You're the executive director of Marion Regional Manufacturers Association. Right. So you've got some jobs. Uh, our, our members certainly do. Your, your yeah. members do, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, and the two of you are here to talk about something called upskilling. Uh, it's described in my notes as a very long description, the new apprenticeship initiative designed to enhance workforce talent to facilitate business expansion and improve production. So good morning to both of you. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good, good. So yeah. what, is, what does that mean? Well, you know, uh, we, we've used a lot of different names about uh, how we develop a workforce. Uh, we, we, we talk about a high school uh, coming out of skills out of high school. It's a, for a from a worker standpoint, we're, we're talking about career development. When you look at that from a employer standpoint, you talk about talent development. Uh, okay, those, okay. So, but, but, so, you know, that talent development process sure, and, yeah. and the career development process, right. they all come together. Um, there are two phases of that, really. There's a, a classroom phase where you learn technical skills in the classroom, and then there's an application phase where you implement that learning in a workplace. Makes sense, yeah. So when you look at apprenticeship, uh, that term carries a lot of different meanings for different people, but apprenticeship is no more than a melding of a career development and a talent development process. It takes a skill in a classroom and it takes a workplace learning process application and yeah. puts those together. Um, it's a commitment by a worker and an employer to develop their talent right. over a period of time so that their value in terms of uh, efficiency and expansion in the workplace uh, improves and expands. And as a result of that, that employer feels like they're worth more money to them and, as an asset. And what role does Career Source have in that? That sounds like something a school would do. Well, certainly the schools are the educational medium right. of that. Right. Um, our role in there is we're just really out trying to talk it up. Uh, we're trying to get the synergy going to where um, employers realize that there's a lot of capacity out there. The the product uh, a year, a little over a year ago, Rob uh, went out and started looking at how do we deal with the response. So manufacturing community does a lot of CNC uh, operators and programmers. They've had that need for a long time. Rob found a software product that can replicate any machine. Oh wow! That an employer has so. That's a big asset to an educational institution. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the machine, CNC machines, cost a quarter of a million dollars and up. Wow. So this software, if you operate one type of machine and Rob operates another, it simulates those machines. So a learner can go in there and learn the basics and then go over and simulate that right. using the very machine uh, that somebody's going to have in the workplace. So using our experience from radio, we've both been done radio for a long time, and we've seen it change. I mean, we went from tape recorders to what we have now. But if we had left radio back in the tape recorder days and entered it now, it would have been like, what? I wouldn't know what to do. But the fact that it was introduced one piece at a time, and for a while there we had both pieces... So the, the guy who has the talent or the lady who has the talent and, and the skills now... Ten years from now, they're on the job. Do they? Does it automatically happen like it did for us, or do they need more education? How does that work? There, there's a continuous education. Manufacturing has changed significantly from what it was in the past. In the past, there was uh, more, there are more dirty jobs, a lot of lifting, and and so on. Manufacturing today is advanced manufacturing, high technology, really? automation, and and it's it's. Just like uh, your business, it, it, it changes 
through the years and and it requires continuous training in, in new technologies uh, and and so that's one of the issues that manufacturers have is finding people with those skills to run right. this new technology and they're and they're good high paid jobs as well too so, so uh, the upskilling program let, 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 let's just say well, for example up, I, I up, left upskilling is is really a term that uh, is coming out of Washington right now and, oh, is that? and, okay. and, and it's uh, being applied across the board in the workforce and educational sectors and Upskilling is really when you look at an existing workforce, and when we talk about apprenticeship or talent development, we don't have to just talk about that from the young uh, man or woman coming out of high school. And, and by the way, there's a lot of manufacturing opportunities as a result of technology that really young women have the specific skills for, fine motor skills uh, especially. But upskilling is also where you take a worker who, like you said, let's you know you're in the you're in the business now, right, right. and the technology pushes you in a different way. An employer to improve their productivity has got to institute new equipment, new machines, new right, processes. Right. Well, upskilling is taking you and and working with you on an educational program where you go to the class size, you get the technical knowledge okay. through a, maybe in an evening program, and then you're coming back on the job and you're applying that skill on the job. So really the upskilling part is designed to really focus on existing workers more than young young workers coming I gotcha. in. I gotcha. I gotcha. But they, That's they work both ways when you think of it. It's upskilling that that worker. Because and, you wouldn't. And the process takes them from an entry level or a level where they had previous right. skills in the case of an existing worker and carries them on into a new skill environment. Are there finances involved in this? Uh, does the worker have to pay for this program or the employer? Well, that's one of the things that we're trying to promote because with the federal grant and some of our funding, we can step in and assist in reducing those costs. The federal grant uh, is a five-year program. Um, we're shifting a lot of our program. So, I mean, you can't go out and say to a business, hey, look, we're going after a federal grant and if you don't get the grant because they're very competitive then say, oh, well, sorry, we have to wait till next time. So we're looking at the funding we've got to come in and support the program whether we get the federal grant or not. So that will cover the cost of the education process, the, the apprentice, if you will, right. the, the, the right. worker won't have to pay for the cost of the training. The employer won't have to pay anything but the wages that they would normally pay to a worker. I got you. So we're trying to come in, and, and where we fit in the process is energizing and working with the manufacturers to energize that process, and then to step in with our funding to help transition and build that capacity so that in the future we've got a real solid talent pool and process. Okay, so let's say I'm an employer. And I have a workforce, and I have some guys that have been working with me for a while. I know they're very good, but I, I, I get the sense that technology is passing them by, and, and they need a little, they need to be fortified a little bit. Do I contact you and say, hey, I heard you on the radio. I would like to have my guys go through the program. Is that how this is going to sure, work? Sure, and, and um, we, we offer several processes for that. We're talking apprenticeship, but we also do work on what we call custom business training, where it's more focused on maybe a single skill upgrade, if you will. Mm -hmm. So you're, you've got a, a person you want to bring over and you, they just need one specific skill. Let's just say for purpose of discussion, you know, we roll back the clock a number of years and we move from a typewriter to learning Microsoft Word. Okay, that's a okay. really good example. So, yeah. so, you know, you say to, to the worker, look, you know, we, we've got to get rid of these typewriters. And they <laughs> yeah. go, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, I don't know anything about that computer and that software. Yeah. And yeah. the college has got this program where they can train you. And then, so we would come in and say, look, if you send your worker to the college and they get a certificate, program coming out of that, a specific skill recognition that's recognized, will reimburse you for the cost of sending that person to school. So we step in with that. Now that's one phase, and then we have the longer term skill development process that we want to 
we want to talk with about uh, the apprenticeships. So, right. so uh, there's multiple sides there. We have to take a little break. Plus, we have a phone call waiting to, to talk to you. So we'll take the weather break and be right back. And then we'll continue with our discussion. It's very fascinating. I love the fact that I got it. Sometimes it takes me 20 minutes before I get it. Uh, upskilling is what we're talking about. Rusty Skinner is who is here, as well as Rob Adamak. And uh, we'll be right back after the weather. This is WOCA. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Say voting is no accident. It'll be sunny today, but breezy and cool with a high between 57 in the northernmost part of the zone and 65 in the southernmost part. Clear and cold tonight. Those will drop to 30 in the interior spots to about 40 along the coast. Sunny but cool tomorrow, high 60 to 64. And for Sunday, plenty of sunshine. Highs ranging from 60 in the northernmost part of the zone to 67 in the southernmost part. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Guy Harvey Checking is now exclusively available at Gateway Bank. With Guy Harvey Checking, you will receive Gateway's premium checking account, plus several other Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation features, including membership to the Guy Harvey Hammerhead Nation, free Guy Harvey t-shirt, and an exclusive Guy Harvey debit card. At Gateway Bank, we will make a $50 donation to the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation for every new account opened. This is just one more reason why people choose Gateway Bank. Sign up today for your exclusive Guy Harvey Checking account with Gateway. Details available at gatewaybankcfl.com, member FDIC. Wow, I'm, lear- I'm learning, by the way, during the break. Reprogram some of the, things- the machine and switch out the material. Uh, all right. Let's, wow. let's get back. Uh, we are back on the air now. So uh, uh, Rusty was just telling us some of the things we manufacture in Ocala. That I, I am oblivious to some of the things that are happening around here. Uh, Rusty Skinner, again, uh, Rob Adamak, and uh, we have a phone call. So thank you for calling. And if you guys put your headphones on. Can you hear me, by the way, in your headset? Yes. Sir. Okay. Then you'll be able to hear the caller. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. By the way, you're on the air now. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, you know, I... I find this all interesting. Uh, basically, I'm electronically challenged. <laughs> if I can't see it, feel it, and touch it, I can't do it. But uh, my question to you is, how about the, these uh, schools that you have? You know, they're private uh, schools, but they teach you the technology. And how about the fact that the manufacturing may be done robotically, but if the robot uh, goes on the fritz you need somebody that can repair that and that would probably require them to be uh, have electromechanical skills and uh, I'm just wondering what you feel about uh, uh, pairing people up with some of these schools to get them you know these better jobs and it, it seems to me uh, having electromechanical uh, skills uh, puts you in a very uh, high position of being able to, uh, or a good high salary position, because if you can't fix the robot, the robot isn't making anything. So I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. All right. That's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, you bring up uh, a good point. Um, with the addition of more automation and, and robotics, it's although it may be replacing a manual uh, assembly position in the manufacturing plant, it's creating a higher uh, skilled, higher paid job uh, for someone who's going to go ahead and, and program that, that robot or, or repair the robot when it's down. Uh, we work uh, very closely with uh, the manufacturers and, uh, and the uh, schools uh, that are out there to do that training. Uh, for example, I sit on uh, the advisory boards uh, for the engineering technology de- degree program at uh, CF, as well as uh, on the advisory committee for MTI, the technical high school, and also uh, the Withahoochee Technical College down in, down in Inverness. Uh, we, I work with them in, in developing the curriculum that the manufacturers need in order to train uh, their specific employees for for the skilled jobs that they require. Uh, so there's a, a lot of interaction. We're very tied together, and then we have Career Source that helps uh, fund uh, that training for the manufacturers. We all understand the importance of uh, helping our manufacturers stay competitive as well as growing their business. 
uh, a trained workforce is always uh, one of the the biggest challenges that manufacturers face. Do we, do we face this situation in 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 Ocala right now? We have this fledgling uh, basketball team. the The problem that they face is that they get these talented basketball players who then get recruited by the basketball teams that can pay more. Do we have that same circumstance in manufacturing in Ocala? Let's say somebody gets the skills, you put them through all the learning and all the training. Now somebody's luring them to New York or to you know, Chicago. I mean, do we have that problem? Uh, yeah, that certainly happens sometimes. But in most cases, uh, the, the folks still want to stay in, in the particular area. Uh, our, in our area, manufacturing is growing, so there's there continues to be more opportunities for employees to continue to grow. So um, although that, that does happen occasionally, uh, we, uh, we're we growing and we have enough opportunities here that we're usually able to repay well, that's that. Good. That's good news. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, that's, that's an issue that we do here. And uh, I, I think one of the employers in town responded to that the best. They said, you know, uh, somebody once told me, said, well, what, what if we train them and they leave? And he said, well, what yeah. if we train them and they don't? Yeah. Why do we don't train them and they and they don't leave? You know, in other words, you know, if you're if you don't if you don't look at the process as one that you're you're moving your workforce and your company forward. Sure. Yeah. Um, the day and time where where people stay someplace for thirty years is probably we're never going to see that again. I mean, that's just there's too much other things going on in our society for that. We're much too more mobile than than we used to be. Nobody works down the block and around the corner anymore mm, i mean except for it, me <laughs> <laughs> so so but 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 if you if you don't invest in your in your workforce it's like not going out and buying that cnc machine good point uh, that's uh, a uh, really uh, good point i mean if, if, if you if you're if you're if you think you can go through and and produce a volume of product manually that you can produce with a CNC machine, well, go ahead. But I think you, most people would say that's not going to happen. I mean, mm-hmm. one of the company I forgot the amount, but the, the increase in productivity over the same period of time is just astounding with the CNC machine. And so, you know, we're competing in a world where that level of productivity is being achieved in other countries, in Europe, in China, that's Japan. That's good points, yeah. And so... The companies, if they're going to if they're going to grow here, they've got to look at that investment both in machine and talent. And our role is to try to step in, work with the the industry, work with the education partners that we have in our community, do our best to try to help everybody connect, so they can grow, so they have a workforce here that uh, responds to. The other thing is, is with the apprenticeship programs, the numbers show that on average retention of of an employee after you've put them through an apprenticeship program is 91 percent, which is really really good. Uh, so uh, most most uh, employees, when they see their employer investing in them tend to be more loyal toward That's that company. That's a good point, too, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. So if, if I'm listening and I'm the employee and I think, gosh, you know, I, I know that there are skills I should have that it might, the, the business around me is, is passing me, do I take this interview information and bring it to my boss and have, have him call you? Because it has to come from the employer, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, because the way the apprenticeship program works, it's the first thing that happens in setting up an apprenticeship program is putting a, a committee together of employers. And that committee is what controls uh, the what curriculum is used, uh, what uh, the, the base pay scale is for the apprenticeship, and, and so on. So yeah, f- folks that, that are out there working that are interested in doing that thing should go to their employers and say, I would like to get involved in this. And then they could come to us, and then we help facilitate putting that, that committee together, uh, getting the apprenticeship program registered at the state. The state automatically regist- registers uh, it with the federal government. So th- at the end, at the completion of the apprenticeship program, they have a, a journeyman license that's, that's good throughout the country. You know, you, you look at uh, 
at, at setting up the program and how do you get into that. And I think one of the key factors that, uh, that both the employees and employers need to understand is when you start looking like at CNC operation, right. somebody has to have good math skills to get into that. So um, one of the key processes of coming into the program is an assessment of math skills. Because if somebody doesn't have the math skills to go in and, and apply those right, in right, a learning right. environment, then they're not going to be successful. So a, a selection or a screening process looking at math skills or some of the other factors is an important part of how do you get into that program. And employers set those rules based on the skills, the base skills required to do that job. And math is uh, the easiest example when you use with yeah. CNC, but there's others as well. And uh, talking about computer numeric control, you say that you also train operators and programmers. What is the difference between the two? Uh, an operator is someone that that could run the machine. They'll, they could go to the machine and pull down a program that's already written uh, to make a particular product. Uh, they also learn how to load the tools into the machine that, that would cut the, the, the material, whether it's metal, plastic, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they're able to load uh, the piece of material in there correctly. So, so they, they could make, uh, they're, they're, uh, there's many manufacturers that have a lot of operators that uh, run parts that are run on a continuous basis. And then you have the programmer, they have the, the higher level skills where they're given a, a drawing or they're giving, given a, a part to copy and they go ahead and write the code uh, that gets loaded into the machine uh, oh. that tells, how, tells the machine how to move the various tools around to cut the part out. Oh, interesting. So if you're an employer and you want to develop the talent, this is the program to uh, find out more about, the apprenticeship program you're talking about. Yes, sure. Uh, I mean, we're talking a lot about manufacturing, but it... It, 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 it applies it to other things, covers, too? Covers other I was going to ask that, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you go back, uh, we're working with uh, Wittlacoochee Technical Institute over in Inverness, and they're pulling some employers together who are plumbers uh, and own plumbers. Okay, companies. right, right. So right. there's uh, other skills. Construction skills are normally there, but you have uh, technology skills as well. I mean, you know, if you think about somebody coming in and uh, and they start off with a, a basic knowledge of, uh, say, Photoshop, and they work their way up to improve right, yeah. skills, I'm, yeah. I'm stretching that maybe a little bit, but the, the idea that there's a lot of technology, you can uh, come in and learn how to operate uh, a right. particular uh, technology program, and then you can learn how to, to program that, that mm -hmm. thing so it does different functions from before. So I think there's a, when, when people think of that, they tend to think of one or two, they're construction oriented mm -hmm. or they're manufacturing Good point, yeah. But, could but be it anybody. Can, it, but it could, could be any, uh, employer who has a skill that says there's there's a certain skill you start with but I also have in that same uh, career path within my company if you will the need for people at various other skill levels working out of that same product or with that same uh, concept. Okay I don't want to run out of time before we get the important information out which is how to get in touch with you so that people can learn more or maybe figure out how to become part of the part of it actually so what do they do they call my phone they go online well uh, they can uh, call me if they're if they're manufacturers uh, we'd certainly want them to begin to work with Rob Rob's trying to put all of that together uh, they can give if they're in another skill area they can call me um, our number is uh, th area 352 861-1650 that's my direct line and okay. I'll, I'll make sure we start working with them and put them in touch with maybe other people in that same industry sector or looking for that same type of employee skill. Okay, uh, thank you guys. Thank you for coming in. Uh, Rusty Skinner and, and Rob Adamak, thank you both for what you're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm so pleased to see that Ocala has all of this and, and, and the manufacturing. I, I wish we could have had what you said off the air, on the air, but Trust me, listeners, we have a lot of stuff out there that you can stay in Ocala and not have to move away to have a good job. That's right. Sure they, make it, 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 they make uh, medical devices here. So. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thank both. you very that, much. That was great information. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages.